<laughs> I'm tying my shoelaces. I do this. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode seventy four of Paper Tuesdays with Michael Boyer, uh, Mark Alvin, Robbie Dunn. Well, Mark. Michael. How are you? I'm fantastic. Well, we're joined by the great Tommy Martin. Tommy, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Welcome, Tommy. Lads, it's a pleasure to be on. I'm delighted. Tommy, we're going to dive in. Uh, I, like, I don't know what we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like to keep it vague and ambiguous, all right. But I want to dive in and say um, that, uh, I, to be honest, we wouldn't know. Well, I don't know if you know Tommy that well, but I don't know Tommy that well. But from uh, the time spent in Gorey Community School, uh, you were definitely a key figure of the, the rugby area, the rugby zone, the rugby part of the school. And then we were probably more in the GA area. And it's just an interesting uh thing to note because in other schools secondary schools there could have been an urban rural divide but in Gory Community School there was definitely an interest specific divide you know you had your specific codes or whatever and you stuck to them is that how you found your secondary school experience what what, what do you think yeah like rugby was a weird one in our school though because we're in the back hours of nowhere in terms of rugby like we're not a private school or anything rugby was just one of these things where like um like up until third year, I remember John Forrest would bring me into his office and like, ah, Tommy, pick the team there now. And then you're scraping to get a lad just want to go on the hop for classes for the, for the first like three years. Then in, in like, who do we have in TY? And then in fifth year, you had the likes of Isaac Porter, Stephen Brown, all these lads that were stalwarts. And then come sixth year, it was just again, it was like just a way to get off class. Like it was never taken anyway seriously like we never trained we just whatever team was up in the rugby club in the local rugby club just came along and they played pretty much the exact same thing it was more divided if you got a chance to have a go at Carnu. now there was a, a nice shot now but right. Carnu were never to be rated anyway though <laughs> i played a rugby match did you yeah it's like coming saying lads to get off class but I oh i did too i did that as did well you? actually yeah <laughs> <I don't... laughs> where did you go we oh. went to dublin so it was the whole day off like, yeah you know, i was saying yeah. yes <laughs> yeah i think i played on the wing for five minutes right i didn't know any other position yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but tommy that link with the rugby club like the wing is like corner back though yeah it, i didn't get much of the ball thankfully like yeah yeah it's just a nice position to hop onto and just run with yeah. it all you get just run and hope for the if best you have the legs then you go for it yeah um but like you you started up your fitness business back in 2017 in the rugby club you know so are you still do you still play rugby like what you must have benefited from that that support of a club at the time yeah like don't Rugby's probably been my biggest influencer. Like I remember I went to uh I went to well five years ago I went to Australia and I decided within a day, I was like, right, you know what, I think I might fuck off to Australia. And then within a week my mate contacted me, he was like, Tommy, I've got a team over here looking to pay your flights. Now I'm by all means of the imagination a shite rugby player, but I talk a lot of shite. So I was like, ah yeah, no, I played up in the likes of Lansdowne and all this just to get the flight over. So got it over there and it was kind of from the the Australian side of things that I pick up personal training because I was only oh. I was only tipping along here with um working in gyms up until that point. But it was in Australia where I kind of set myself off working in the gym and working as a personal trainer. Then um with with the rugby club like the rugby club has always been great to me. Like we were kind of set up to to go into a partnership before the first lockdown um happened just because they've got a great facility up there that just needs a little bit of maintenance. It's like anything you get get a couple of club boys in that are just happy with a gym but it suffers a bit of wear and tear because there's no one actually looking after like that's just one of the fucking lift weights to just drop them on the ground no one really gives 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 a crap about it because it's a free gym um so uh yeah like, like i know the rugby club a lot now and they're a great little club now uh, i don't play as much now i've kind of tippled over and played a bit more american football than uh, mm. than rugby but that's just because i played rugby all my life you always want to do something different kind of as you as you tip on an age, or will I tip on an age? Anyway, <laughs> it must come from your love of sport. Anyway. It must come from your love of sport, like American football. You know, you, you um, you're big with the Wexford Eagles, yeah. Yeah, Wexford Eagles. Like we're uh, that was just off a whim. I just seen them put up on Facebook one day about lads were training in the showgrounds. So I went up, and then there was about fucking ten of us running around. None of us knew anything, and then from there it was a bit of crack, and then. I felt like I got less concussions with the American football than I did with the rugby. So I was like, ah, well, it's probably suited for me a bit more now. Right. Yeah. 
Um, looking back on your time in Australia, what, what do you think you gained as a personal trainer from starting out over there and then coming over here? Say that again? Sorry, like what did you gain from your time in Australia? Like it seems to be a big, um, personal training is a, you know, a big thing in Australia, it seems, is it? Um, like what, what, what characteristics do you think um, you, you owe to your time spent in Australia? Australia is a weird one because I was in Perth and um, in over there there's like six gyms in a mile radius and then there's nearly 52 gyms in a three mile, mile radius. And then when you go into a gym, you're one of what, maybe six or seven PTs in that gym and everyone's fighting over everything. So like if you're seen as to be approaching someone's client, it's um, it's it's like you're committing the biggest crime ever. So you're afraid to nearly talk to anyone in that situation. But the biggest thing I ever learned from Australia was it's all about the grind. Like I remember I was in a 24 hour gym and uh, now I, I'd only used to get paid whatever, whatever I PT'd and I'd have to pay rent to the gym. So um, if I got three clients, well, that would basically just cover my rent for the gym. So I had to, I had to get as much clients as possible. So it just taught me the fact that if I arrived there at six o'clock, in the morning and I stayed there till eight o'clock at night and I just surround myself with as many people as possible. There's a chance I might pick up a couple of clients and I kind of Australia in that way was, it was great because it taught me lessons, but I was this Irish little kid coming into a gym with a kind of a, not an ego about me, but like, right, well, this is what I want my career to be. And there was already six or seven lads set up there that were like, well, here's more competition and they're not, they're, they're going to be helpful, but they're not going to be that helpful. So I, uh, yeah, I just did that kind of, I wouldn't say I was a massive success over there, but when I came back, whatever I learned over there kind of set with me. And then I think I pretty much joined um, the MyFit gym as a personal trainer there. And then the same kind of ethos would, would follow you. Like, I think, I think once you know, like what you really want and once you know, like, right, well, it, do, it does take fucking hours. It does take a lot of the time. Like I remember I used to sleep in my, now technically you don't have to do it anymore, but I remember I used to sleep in MyFit gym say I've slept over in my fit gym about 40 times. I used to take a client at 10 o'clock and because we closed at 10, I wouldn't be out till 11. And by the time I clean up and everything was sorted, I just put the two sofas together, turn off all the lights, get a sleeping bag that I hid, sleep in my fit, wake up at about half five, get a shower, open up the gym to a six o'clock client and then get the gym ready to go for seven o'clock. And nobody none knew the why they'll know now they'll they'll hear this and like oh that fucking <laughs> eagles getting free rent off us but uh, <laughs> they'll know now but it's just it's just one of these things where it's like well i could go home i could get four hours sleep and i could be a bit dodgy or i could probably keep in a decent six or seven hours sleep here and uh and be grand for the whole day yeah um that's interesting that the fact that you know it's such a saturated uh, saturated market i use that cliche uh, in australia because like you know it's quite competitive and gory as well you know plenty of trainers plenty of gyms and yet you're carving out your own community with tri-factor fitness um that's i use i don't use that word lightly community that seems like a defining characteristic of tri-factor and something that you definitely try to push and everyone that's seen that goes to your gym seems to ha- you know respect ye and really enjoy their time with ye. Um, what do you think ye aim for with Trifactor? Well, so you can go, like the way I see it is, and Mark will know this well enough. Like you can, you can, you can get personal training anywhere. Like you can, as you said, gory saturated. There is, and each offers something a tiny bit different. Like, mm-hmm. um, Cormac Blue Zone's doing wonders out in Cranford. Uh, the fitness tailor is the old stalwart. Like he's fucking, he's like been there years. Again, he's got a good base behind him. Then you've got the likes of uh, Mark coming up. Then you've got um, the 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 crowd out in Core Town, the Core Town fitness classes, and it's only getting um, more saturated. But instead of going and entering a, a like right, well, I have to compete against this person. I have to compete this against this person. We we were always like, well just build something that we'd like to train in. And it's like, well, I love mindset and I love the the nature of, of how people think. And it's my most interesting part of personal training, getting to know a person. So I, I, I like the idea of developing a community because you can train anywhere for an hour. You can go to a gym for an hour. You can go running for an hour. But what separates our hour from everyone else's hour 
And that's why you want to kind of create, uh, create a community within the class where people hang out, out after the class, where people will go drinking together, or people will, will hike together, or people mm. will talk to each other about their problems, whatever it may be. Like you go into a class and a lot of it is just shy talk for me and the lads, but it's a way of just getting people to open up. And that hour out of the day is, is something that they can completely just take away all the problems from and they can just enjoy that hour or they can work on themselves as opposed to, oh, let's just count reps and you're going to lift this weight. But, the, but again, there's no, there's, no, there's no right or wrong way to PT because there's so many PTs out there. It's just what works for us is kind of just building up a thing where we just want you to come in and create a vibe that everyone can kind of bounce off of. Yeah. Essentially. Like, you have that connection there with like the things like the client of the month thing. You know, I think they're great because the, some of your clients anywhere that are like, well, the previous guest of the show, James Borden, won your October client of the month. And, you know, even Jimmers, he, yeah, yeah, like he is he's grinded. You know, you can tell he has uh, worked so hard and, and continues to work on his fitness. And it's it's a nice it's a nice gesture, you know, to show that, you know, you've built up a connection with the client. And now there's your little reward your well, not a little reward, but your reward, your your pat on the back, your your bolster and step. The, the, the key thing is I am like. We're not ones for Corona. Like, like Jim James has a great transformation. Like Jim, Jimmer's, but I, I, like, I never take credit for that because Jimmer is flat out every single day, and I'm only a small part of what James does. And um, I like James as much for the crack as anything else. Like Jimmer's mm. is just a fucking good blow. Mm. Um, but with our client of the month, we don't necessarily go right. Well, you've lost the most weight. Your client of the month. It's who makes the biggest change in their life. Who, who buys into the process and because you can buy into the process and struggle with weight loss for your whole life but you've bought into a process and you've used um exercise and fitness and nutrition as a lifestyle change it doesn't mean you've automatically lost eight inches and you are the best client it's the person who creates a healthy change in their life and opens up to new things so we've got for instance uh our last client month that we still have to announce is Jer harkin and Jer is this big tall gunny gall lad lovely lad but he's consistent he's there he's a plaster he's consistent he'll come in he lift weights he does his job and he leaves and and it's just it's quite often clients like that you know uh get overlooked because he's a big tall man he's not got like he's not going to lose a crazy amount of weight he's not going to gain a crazy amount of muscle but because of that he's still putting in as much if not more effort than everybody else so we're like right well he deserves it because from start to finish, he'll be there. Look, I'll know when he's coming in Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If he can get in five days a week, he'll be in five days a week. On the back of training with us, he's bought like bought his own gym in the back of his house. So it's that kind of the 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 buy-in to to well, this is a lifestyle change. It's not right. Well, I'm going to lose as much weight as I can in this specific time, and that's it. Just it's tiny little changes that go well. Well, exercise is now fun. It's enjoyable. It's not this thing that has to be rigid. Mm. that's a hard thing to measure as well because there's no number on mindset that's like you can't see that someone has gone from zero to say a seven in a mindset but like you, you can't measure but you can see it whereas weight loss you can see which is and those are the best people like i think to work with are people who have bought in themselves and you're just sort of there with them you know you're not there for them do you know what i mean yeah that's like like you probably see it now more so ever like people it's 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 not selling the product anymore it's it's um birthing a mindset because mm. if you write everything out for a person and you go right well you have to eat all of this and you have to do this exercise mm. yes they can do it but they won't grow from it they'll just go right well i just followed this a stick plan where if you get into a mindset like exercise is only one small facet of life but if you can instill the same tools that you uh introduce into a, a pt client and they can carry that into different aspects. Like you're not always going to lift the heaviest weight that that that, that in the gym, and you, and you have to realize, well, it's okay to fail, but mm. never stop trying. Mm. Or it's okay to be in the bottom of a class and feel like everyone else is better than you. That's okay because you may have had an off day, or or, or you set the bar well. Well, I'm not where I need to be, but I want to I want to push myself that bit further. I can match that girl, or I can lift the same weight as, as that person there. It's 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 how we can translate what we do exercise wise into life and that's the way i kind of like the way trifactor is we we talk about like we've got a lot of clients that have set up their own businesses and, and, and done that and like when they ever they'll ask us our opinion i'm like well 
go for it because anything in life worth doing is worth overdoing. Just fucking throw yourself at these things. And 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 there's no point not trying because within reason, like if you work hard enough, as you see in the gym, uh, there is results and just take that facet outside of that. I mean, Tommy, a lot of this is intertwined. Kind of, um, Sorry, yeah. Uh, a lot of this is intertwined with the comfort zone and that's a key factor in, you have a motto on a good bit of your literature about the comfort zone, don't you? What is it? Yeah, well, like, like nothing ever happens in the comfort zone. Like, you always have to step outside. Like, like it's, but it's even little things. Like, the comfort zone is so, it's so easy to do things in life right now. It's so easy to get a, a job that you're, that you're reasonably happy in, but that you can do with your eyes closed. Yeah. And then go home and sit in front of the TV and watch. Like, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. you, you can easily just get caught in this little mindset of that, that that's okay. And it's only when something kind of happens to you in life where you go, well, maybe, maybe everything's not okay. Maybe if I step outside my comfort zone, I'll grow a little bit more or I'll, or like, or I'll, what's the way, what, best way to phrase this? It's, you don't really know, um, how good you can be until you step outside the zone because you because you need to know what failure feels like you need to know what being on your like being broke feels like you need to know what feeling absolutely bollocks feels like you need to know when your body has been pushed to its exact limit what's it feel like because then you know when you get back up from all of these you're a stronger individual for it and you're a lot stronger than you th think and it happens a lot with mental health so like people people don't know like the reason why mental health is so prominent now is because people have never really felt like this before and they don't know what this feeling is anymore and then but when you do get out of this feeling and you do improve out of this you go well fuck i know what it feels like now so when it when it happens to me again i know i'm stronger than it how tommy how do you ramble you someone someone from <laughs> say, that zero to a one so say like someone you know or care about and you see them struggling and you know that if they just took on the responsibility of doing something hard and getting outside their comfort zone that they would improve from it but but they're still stuck where they are like is there do you just sort of leave them in their own time to make their way to that decision to step outside the comfort zone or like do you have a, a method of pushing them to take the first step well like it's weird like you, you you can only do what you can do as a person like i can't physically drag myself to get i can't physically drag someone out of a dark place or i can't physically drag someone like well, with a client i'm only there for one hour of their 23 hours in a day and possibly i'll only ever see them three times a week so there's only so much pushing you can do it, it you have to everyone's accountable for themselves and what we often see is people lose their accountability or place their accountability on others. So like a PT should never be accountable for that person. They are just merely a mentor in the fitness and the nutrition side, whatever it may be. A person needs to develop their own accountability. And it's only when you push people to, to achieve small little steps or small little goals, we're like, right, well, fuck. And you know, I never could do 5k before, but I can do it now. I wonder what else I can I do? And it's, and it's applying to these little things that, but they're accountable to themselves because if you if you go right well and and as a personal trainer you'll get it a lot it's like um oh well i'm not at this weight it's oh, it's your fault mm. well you've trained quite well with me you've told me what you've eaten every day and i'm i'm, I'm quite happy with that and there's no reason you shouldn't be where you are and then you can hear them converse with someone in the class and they go oh well listen went a bit overboard there the last three weeks the family was over but they won't tell that to you because mm. they don't want to deal with their own accountability and that's that's cross with everything like like i'm a victim of, to it we're all victims of mm. it's so easy to pass off things then go you know holy 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 shit it's, it's actually on me and then when you start taking that decision things in life start to kind of not get easier but you can you can see further into the future to go right well listen i can if I just get accountable to this, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in gym, whether it's in work, whatever it may be, friendships even, like we have to be accountable to our own friendships sometimes too, especially during lockdown. Like a lot of the time I'll think, oh, my mates are fine. I won't text them. Then all of a sudden one of them will go, oh shit, I'm not feeling great. And you're like, well, fuck, I'm actually, I'm accountable to the own friendships as well. That's like, I have to fucking, why am I sitting on my arse for playing college of for five hours where I could have been ringing one of the boys to see how he is because I haven't spoken to him in seven years. Like, or well not seven years but like seven seven weeks or whatever like yeah one of my best mates we don't talk to each other 
and then he's got three kids in the blink of an eye and I'm like fuck we're still best mates and we'll still meet up but he tells me how hard his times were and how he was under stress and I was like well Jesus I need to be a better friend I need to be accountable for that to not let my friend know that he's by himself in these situations and vice versa like he he asked me about shit and I was like it's like Jesus Tommy probably should have reached out to you as well so accountability is not just uh, a, a gym based thing it's 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 a life based thing that we have to be accountable to things not working out or if they are and if things do work out be accountable and go well fuck you know what I deserve that like Jim or Mordens I'll take no credit for James because what he's done is is it all on his own back it's nice to throw up a transformation photo of James and it's nice to go oh well he was a member here at Trifactor Fitness and but that that's all off his own back. That's nothing to I'm just the, the mere vessel that he got to work out through. That's beautiful, Tommy. Great response. Um on that, a lot of what you said there is about taking pers- ultimate uh, responsibility for all those aspects of life, as you mentioned, uh, be it health, be it friendship. And um I think this kind of ties in nicely to your tattoo. Um do not go gently into give us the quote. So do not go gentle into that good night, rage, rage against the dying of the light. So um, I don't know if it, like you, you lads or no, like ever since my brother passed away, I've kind of, I've got this, well, why not mentality? Like, and it, like I'm, I'm fucking, if you go, if you like this podcast, you ask me straight away, I'll go, yeah. I very rarely say no to things. Yeah. I think um, it's like, it's ever seen the film, Yes Man, not a great movie. But it's a good ideology that just start saying yes to things because you never know what happens as a result. You never know which road leads you to it. Because I see it in my own kind of circle of friends and I see it in my own family that it's so easy to develop a victim mentality. And I see it's so easy to go, oh, well, especially with lockdowns. It's like, oh, well, the government shut us down. We're out of work. What, what can you do? Like, and Mark, you've set up a business now in the worst time possible you know where it's like well just like it's fucking lockdown but then again you could go well you could look at that you could go right well fuck this is an opportunity which you have now and it's like well this is savage now because you've got a multiple online client base whereas if you look at things there's two ways to look at things you can either go oh poor me boo hoo hoo and then and in that as well you don't realize that's actually contagious like if i go oh poor me poor me poor me and my friends around me he's like oh you know what life is a wee bit shit and then he can seep that onto somebody else. And you don't know what anyone's dealing with. So your ne- negativity could be the final straw in that person's um, kind of mindset. Or it can be, but if you just switch it and go, you know, fucking life's not all that bad. We're in a, we're in a lockdown, but I get to hike more. I get to, I get to, uh, I get to get out more. I get to focus on my own fitness a lot more, which is sometimes as PTs, it's often like everyone assumes a PT should be the fittest person in the world. But then when you realize you do split shifts and you work in the morning and work in the evening, those four hours in the middle of the day, you want to sit on your arse and eat mm-hmm. peanut butter and play PlayStation or you want to do something else or you want to see friends. Um, but it's just, it's, it's kind of the value of, of, of Christopher's uh, kind of passing was it made me appreciate life because it's only when you get a shock or a realization do you actually appreciate the things like I'll often find myself on a walk with like one of the lads or, or herself and then I'll just stop and I look out and I was like fuck Jesus have a look at that view it's actually quite nice whereas sometimes your head's down you're focusing on a conversation you're just walking for the sake of walk and you don't lift your head up every time and go oh fuck this is it's yeah. the sunset is coming out and you don't really appreciate these things and it's, hmm. it's nice to go well uh, it's nice to saying yes to things and embracing things because it's often it's so easy just to fall into this this thing of ah well sure if it happens it happens well that's not necessarily true you have to act on something to make it happen yeah and you, you see that in your life as well I suppose like it it is um that, that that's one way to to deal and tackle with your your grief and uh it's it's words can't really describe it i suppose either but like it, it's it's one way to try to honor christopher as well isn't it yeah like, like everyone who knows me or knew chris knew we were best mates and like grief is a fucker like you don't know when it hits like when chris died i thought everything was grand and then fast forward what maybe six seven months later and i was in australia and i was getting hospitalized for panic attacks and 
I didn't know what was happening because every like you will not see me go down the road now without an inhaler because I have a psychological as as much as it's physical, it's actually a psychological injury. Was if I don't have my inhaler, God, I'm going to end up like Chris. Um, but like it's it's just you have to you have to kind of life is what it is. Like God forbid someone could pass away that I love tomorrow, and you have to understand that it is the worst thing in the world and the loss will stay with you forever but you can you can experience life for that person or you can like I, like I'll never I'll never I'm not, I'm not one of these people that like oh, I'll have to live for Chris because Chris lived his own life and he was his own person mm. but I just have to do my thing to the best of my ability and know that well if life does get me down there's always still life. Like there's always something I can always do. There's always something like, there's always the possibility of change. Like, nothing is permanent. If I feel bad. Well, I'm like, well I, well, I know I'm going to feel bad sometimes. And I know it might last a day, a week or a month, but it's not permanent. It will get better. And then if I'm in an environment that's negative or poor, well, I was like, well, this environment is negative or poor. I need to change it. So there's not, there's not, it's never, the, it's never the final thing. Like there's always ways to change things. And that's the good thing about, the like there's no good thing about losing somebody but it gives you perspective that you can only ever see when you've lost someone so close to you yeah or you get told about it but it's very it's very hard to to listen when people say oh i know what you're going through Mm. they do know what they're going through but it's it's very hard to take that in at the time and go oh well i understand you whereas when you experience it's like right well things become a little bit clearer and then choices in your life whether you like to think it or not become a little bit more clear because you're like you've you've gained from all these experiences i imagine tommy that that perspective um makes the news that you got recently of that you're going to be a father like that that transforms it as well you know that that there's a new life or perspective of that like it, it must be great news for yourself and herself yeah like don't get me wrong it was a shock and then i shot myself for Still am, to be honest. Like I right, seen, right. I was walking there with one of the lads the other day, and I seen a, a like a, a couple with their newborn child, and I was just sweating. Just started sweating. This kid was screaming, throwing a tantrum. I'm like, <laughs> oh Jesus, how am I going to handle it? And then if the kid's bigger than me, like I'm only five foot three, like that kid, hopefully he doesn't get my genetics and he comes out <laughs> like six foot because last thing I need is another short leg, big nose lad walking around. But it's it's scary, but it's one of these things that. It, it is what it is like I'm, I'm delighted and um i'm at the age where i can i can i can handle it like i'm i'm, I'm nearly 30 this year so uh but i am 30 this year so it's, it's came at the right time now arguably i wouldn't have bought a, a one bed cabin if i knew it was going to happen which i bought like only three months ago and i wouldn't have <laughs> had all these plans business-wise but Again, you just have to adapt. It is what it is. It is exciting, though. To be fair, I am. I am looking forward to it. Yeah, sheepishly. Well, I think that child is going to have an amazing father, anyway. No doubt about that. You know, it's, it's <laughs> that perspective and that willingness to, you know, impart the best wisdom is, I think, what anyone can hope from in fatherhood. I think. Oh, thanks for that. Now, uh, but the only problem <laughs> is I've been getting messages about congratulation and like everyone's like, oh, Tommy, so, like delighted for you. But they're all coupled with, oh, it's time to grow up now. <laughs> so like I'm, right. still, I'm still the, the, the 21 year old that gets into all the trouble. Ah, like, <laughs> it's, I was even saying it to my friends, like, I thought it's just so hard to be an adult anymore, like to think that you're an adult. Like I still think that I'm in my college days or like even with like the business, I have to sometimes sit back and go, oh, shit. I'm not a child anymore. Like I'm not this little like teenager anymore. I need to, 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 to adult somewhat, but that'll come like that's, I don't mind being. So what is adulting? Anyway, like, like what, what, I, I don't think, I don't think we ever become adults. No, I don't think adults are real. I was talking to <laughs> my, my little cousin, like he cuts my hair and he was cut, cutting it yesterday. And he was telling me a story. He's doing all the classes through zoom. Right. He was telling me that like, there was this, like they had the, the zoom classroom and somebody muted the teacher <laughs> and the teacher was screaming while she was muted at the class. <laughs> And he just told me a story like cracked up laughing like I was like I wish I was in that Zoom class like I'm fucking 25 but I, like 
I don't think I don't think we ever. Well, I I love to draw on people that had much greater intellects than mine anyway and uh, Carl Jung and Carl Jung says what well, adulthood is about rediscovering the child that you once were and uh, I mean Tommy there's attributes that uh, a normal adult wouldn't be able to develop trifactor fitness you know so I wouldn't uh, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd answer all of those lads and say no no I'm, I'm happy enough where I am thank you very much so. <laughs> but the um, little things though like I still don't know how to like a washing machine still confuse me and I'm 30 years old like like, 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 I live in a fucking like a small cabin, so I, I have to go to the parents' house to to use the washing machine. But I'm like, how the, how the, what fucking buttons do I press? Or like, I shit myself when it comes to like tax and stuff because I'm like, I I, I can't keep receipts. I lose my wallet. I lost my wallet on my phone yesterday, and then someone dropped them to the house. Thankfully. Um, and I'm like, luckily my luckily my accountant's one of my best mates because like I meet him for coffee and he just tells me exactly what to do and I'm like, right, well just 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 handle this for me and then just just like just give me something that I have to do or tell me something that I have to do like just that little aspects that I still have to have to work on like up until I was 16 I used used to like flick my hands to think that I was Spider Man just waiting on a web to come out <laughs> and I was 16 years old like I'm like oh. Probably time to stop. <laughs> Good stuff. Mark, you have a few questions, do you? A few questions here, yeah. A bit less. Uh, there's no Carl Jung in these questions, probably. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. So, uh, I was looking up thought experiments on Reddit to um, oh. waste, waste my own time. But uh, So I came across this one, which is actually kind of interesting. But So imagine a scenario where a young girl, a young girl is experiencing rapid deterioration of the brain. So every time a cell dies, doctors replace them cell by cell with functionally identical computer parts, just like they might give someone with a prosthetic limb. If non-organic non-organic matter cannot be conscious, at which point does she stop being her conscious self and start being AI? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> um... Did you follow all of that, Mark? Because I, I certainly did. Right, so there's a girl that has her deter- her brain is deteriorating. Yeah. So, like, say your leg is deteriorating, they'd put in, like, say, a fake bottom half of your leg or whatever, mm. but they're mm. replacing it cell by cell. Each cell is dying. They're replacing it with a, a manufactured brain cell. Right. Every time one dies. So at what point does she stop being her own conscious self? She still functions the exact same, but at what point does she stop being... And Jessica, are they replacing all of the cells with? Yeah, yeah. Eventually, the whole brain is going to die. But at what point during that deterioration, like it's dying, but it's being rebuilt with computers at the same I'll time. So it... where does it? Where does it? The, the the distinction happen? I'll give a basic answer. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the, don't they say that we only use ten percent of our brain? Mm-hmm. So then, if if when the AI reaches ninety one percent, is that it? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe logical answer i would have went yeah that sounds about right uh Mark, where did you come i know it was read it but like fuck's <laughs> sake i've used to what i lie to you and like no. <laughs> um where bring back blur or oasis that's right <laughs> yeah. do you have an answer mark but do i no tommy go ahead oh first. sorry tommy right? yeah yeah um well i would have said when it gets past 51 percent, like okay. within reason i would have went half and half but uh it's kind of one when you had a couple of beers in you and you're just with the lads. That's kind of a question where you're just sitting around going, ah, I wonder, lads, what, what you think on that one? <laughs> yeah, I think 51%, I reckon. I thought about it and I reckon it's when you reach the brain stem because isn't that where everything is sort of controlled, all the hormones and the biological functions and things like that? So I reckon that's when the computer starts running the show and it stops being run by the person's own... Um, mechanisms as soon as they attack the conscience i'd say yeah the the the, the ability to to think yourself that's the point wherever that point is but is that inside your own head is consciousness inside your brain or is it outside of it that's interesting because you, you you've brought up consciousness there tommy and what i thought you were reaching towards back was the point where the genitalia and the the inner human functions of the person <laughs> <laughs> the, genitalia. You said, uh, the brain stem yeah the brain stem but the brain stem controls a hormone hormones should okay. hormones are related to genitalia no well some of them some of them <laughs> not all of them yeah 
Oh yeah, I kind of got lost there. Get your mind out of the gutter, Michael. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's that's. that's no, I don't think we saw that in there. They send us letters to the editor yeah, of paperchooses dot com. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you know the answer. Uh, I mean, if you could live the life of any super villain for one day, which would you choose? Oh Jesus. Um... You know what I was watching there recently? Mm. Star Wars. And Kylo Ren is a fucking lad, isn't he? Like, I just got, I just was like, he's actually the coolest supervillain. Now, I, I, no spoilers, but like, he doesn't turn into a super in the end. But if I could be one, it would be Kylo Ren. But he lives a life, controls everything, uh, gets to try, like, I suppose, drive around space and uh, has an Empire to beckon call. So there you go, folks. I like I I've never seen Star Wars, so I, I nor have I, that. and I'm glad Mark just rushed oh. to Google Kylo Ren Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's some had hair on him. He looks a bit like Shane, my brother. He looks hair. a bit like Shane, and he also looks like Severus Snape. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fair answer, Michael. What's yours? Um, I wasn't big into the sober villains now. I have to admit. Um, I, I, I think the no, no, and not many are coming to mind now. To be honest, Mark, what about yourself? Uh, well, Heath Ledger's Joker always has to be there in the list, I think. That's probably oh, my biggest. That's a show. But someone was, I was listening to someone talk about Batman the other day, and it's just, when you break it down, it's a billionaire going and beating the shit out of a homeless man. <laughs> 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 and we love it. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Tommy, uh, imagine a scenario where all dogs are wolves and all cats are tigers. Ooh. How do you reconstruct your life to accommodate this? <laughs> oh, no shit. Uh, no, 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 no. Note, the temperaments of the animals do not change. The wolves act like dogs and the tigers behave like cats. But then again, like if they freak out, catastrophic. <laughs> like, like cats are weird though, eh? I've never been a cat person. Like I, I don't understand people that get cats. Because yeah. they're not really pets, like they like they just venture off and they could like basically your cat is everyone else's in the neighborhood's cat, everyone feeds it. So like I presume like dogs are quite well like if you train them up to be like a pack, so wolves are pack orientated. Mm. So uh yeah, I I just become a little I I actually don't even know, that's the word. You'd have to rear a pack, I think. Yeah, you no need for yeah. lap alarms then. If you had a pack of wolves, <laughs> <at your house. laughs> did you ever see your man that uh, lived with the wolves? Like ridiculous. Like he said, like he just used to like bite them on the neck and challenge them and fucking he lived with them for about a couple of months. Which <laughs> fucking <was> insane. <laughs> you have to be the challenge. <laughs> like American, so hey, he was American, and he just like lived in Yellowstone or something, and he just would uh he'd go off and he'd start like like. He would bring them food, so they'd accept them as the as the food giver of the of the pack. But mm. uh, like he lived with them, and uh, he'd sleep pretty much for I know maybe a month or so, and they accepted him. And obviously, that's that's, that's a pretty sweet way to live your life. At some yeah. point, go ah, just what you do what you do for the summer. I just live with a pack of wolves and just. <laughs> <laughs> It's so weird though when like it's it's mating season and you're just like oh shit what do I have to do now? <laughs> Are you in favour of the reintroduction of wolves to the Irish Absolutely landscape? Absolutely no fucking way. Why, <laughs> why would we reintroduce wolves? <laughs> One more problem, like uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they're they're very. It's a very popular proposal. They did it in America in and, Colorado. And it was a bad idea. <laughs> it was it? I think it was. <laughs> Didn't like they reintroduce wolves and it they did. did out loads of fucking animals oh, right. they uh they did it twice i think i know they did it successfully in yellowstone they introduced a pack of woods uh wolves and the whole the whole ecosystem fixed itself mm. because mm. the deers were rampant and then they killed the deers and then um because deers were no longer rampant vegetation could grow and then it all had a trickle down effect mm -hmm. but then again you introduce it to somewhere like ireland and then you have Somewhere like Letterkenny being overrun by wolves and no one's safe. <laughs> so like we don't have the space for like like a pack of wolves up in Clan Four. Like you couldn't fucking <laughs> I don't know. 
Probably not the worst thing out there. Uh, I mean, if you could travel forward in time just once for a five minute period for a specific date and time, what time and date would you choose? Oh, Jesus. I'm going to have to read that one again. So, if you could travel forward in time just once for one five minute period for one specific date and time, what date and time would you choose? So you get to like walk around, look, see what it's like. Any date. Right. Now this is a this is a one, right? Just because he's my boy at the minute, right? And I'm a big fan of him. Have any of us read uh Matthew McConaughey's new book? Oh That's the yeah, two of them, yeah, Robbie, Robbie and I are on it at the moment. Unbelievable. Uh, right. Come up, Regan. Oh, so <laughs> so good. So good. So I fucking I listened to that in an audiobook and then I got into him afterwards and he has this thing, right, where he goes you judge yourself, like, who's your, uh, who's your hero, right? He had a, was at a speech. He was like, my hero is myself in five years' time, right? And then, like, he, was, he said that when he was, like, 20-something, and then he became the famous actor he is, and then someone asked him the exact same question, and he was like, who's your, are you your hero now? And he's like, no, no, not even close. My hero's in another five years' time. So he's always pushed himself. So I've kind of adopted that, where I'd love to know in five years' time, with everything that I've got planned out and everything that I like with chat, well, hopefully one kid, uh, not anymore, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, with everything in mind, just in five years' time, I'd just love to know exactly where I am. Because like, I suppose it, a lot of people probably go, oh, I'd love to know, like, see when I die. Then you wouldn't want to, like, you wouldn't want to know mm. that. Like, I, I've always been that person who wouldn't want to know how you die. Because um, it's just weird, eh? Like, you fucking, yeah drowned like you're never going to an ocean for the rest of your life again like yeah. uh not that i can swim anyway i wouldn't be in one but uh yeah five years time i just love to see where i'm at in five years that's a very good answer yeah. um i was going to say i'd love to see how they commemorate the 1916 rising in like um i don't know 300 years time so would they be flying around would you be able to hovercraft or like what would you be doing like, <laughs> You know, just to see for those five minutes how they're doing it. So, like, is the band in the air or, you know, little simple things like that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I'd go to the two, what's the, the end of whatever the 2000s are. Two, nine, 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 two, nine, 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 New Year's Eve, five minutes beforehand. So right. then yeah. they play like a five minute clip of everything that's happened between now and then. <laughs> and then I get to see it all. <laughs> That'd uh, be some countdown. Yeah. Ten, nine, eight. Yeah. <laughs> Happy 3000. <laughs> Do you reckon, like, we'll actually last another, like, t- till 3,000? you reckon as a planet, again, whatever about climate change, but just, do you reckon we'll just press a reset button and society just goes back to, because society is crazy at the minute. Like, it's mm. fucking, it's eating as we seem to, like, get older, society seems to be reverting back to fucking just a bit more of a primal fucking mm. nature, I think. Yeah, primal nature. That is yeah. the only two words you could describe when when they breached Capitol Hill there recently. <laughs> you yeah. know, who's your man? It was the great clip I said you uh, of SpongeBob SquarePants when they're when they're bouncing into the building and Patrick <laughs> has his hands up in the air because there was no purpose. Like, what were they going to do? Only take the take the lectern, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, primal primal urges. That's what we're returning to, Tommy. Yeah. I, yeah, it definitely. Our population will be different by three thousand. I think. I don't see it going up it might go down and maybe up again mm. but like yeah it's it's going to be strange i don't think we'll be close to what we're at now right i think what's we are due, like we are due a massive like like rebalance like like when population gets so high there's always something that has to bring it back down because like even throughout like the plagues and world war wars uh, world wars or whatever it's always been a right well population's too high we need to to lose a couple of a billion nearly or a million or whatever, a couple of million or whatever that we have to reach surely that point will have to come again mm. that, like not that i want to be one of those that die <laughs> but it's one of, that point really has to come again where you're like all right fair enough there's there's that point where kind of equal e- well it's just equilibrium like where everything has to be balanced we can't have like it's only so far we can go we reproducing yeah. Bring back what China do. Have one child and then that'd be grand folks. <laughs> you can start that trend. <laughs> folks communism. <laughs> yeah. From like a, a pure ecological standpoint, we have way too many people on this landmass. Like it's gonna start cleaning itself somehow or another, like they do down the boglands. 
like if you think about it that way like say we're like the ladybugs like the storks are going to come in and eat us and then that'll re- bring balance back so next question <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the uh, uh, tell me your favorite disney film oh moana I Moana. mean, I, I now, oh, if I have a hangover, I'll just sit out and I'll watch Moana. Or I've actually uh, been vibing with Mulan at the minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the little dragon, is it? The red dragon and the Chinese lady? The red fucking dragon. What is the I'm a sucker for a good uh, soundtrack. I've forgotten the story uh, then. So, like, she's in China and they're at war with the, the Huns and then... Um, her dad, who's like in his 70s or whatever, got conscripted. And then he's obviously too old to fight, so he'd die. So she cut her hair, pretended to be a lad, went off and was like one of the best soldiers there. And then uh, saved the whole of China single-handedly. I love so, that. I just, I so vaguely, I like, her. you know, like Disney films and you sort of half remember what happened in it. That was that one for me. And have you seen Bartok? Bartok the Magnificent. No, I've not, I don't even know what that is. Film. It's like a little white bat. It's a Disney film. I'd have to... I wonder if I can get it here. It's very unprofessional. Um, Bartok. Is that the thing from, like, Anastasia, the little bat? I think that could be it, Bartok. Bartok the Magnificent. Images. It's like a little white bat. Him. Uh, that, that... Now, don't quote me on this, right? Mm. But that is... A little bat. Now, is it Anastasia? That's because I'm old now. I'm tipping 30. No, I haven't seen that. No, no. I'm, I'm, I haven't seen that. I think it could be uh, like a spin off of something to do with like Anastasia or something. It's like a Russian thing. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah, be yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got to the bottom of it. Oh, I know that now. It's <laughs> slightly weird. And... But yeah. Uh, what's your favorite, favorite Disney film? Toy Story. Uh, Toy Story. Oh, is that yeah. Disney, is it? Uh, Pixar is it? Pixar, that's not Disney. Or are they not the mm. same? No. Oh, no. 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 Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, well, then I watched it on Christmas Day. And, well, no, over Christmas and loved it. Soul. That's my favourite one at the moment. Yeah, it's a it. deep, deep one from Disney. Have you seen it? Yeah. No, I, 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 was, I watched it over Christmas too, but I, I fell asleep. It was after the dinner, so I was, <laughs> I was going for my, my Christmas night nap. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Lion King Disney. Yeah, Lion yeah, King. Lion King. I right. don't. I'm not a fan of the uh, of the. Well, not a fan for the majority of remakes I like, but for mm. something like Lion King, I'd be always on the illusion the cartoon is is the goat on that. Oh yeah. Same with uh, Aladdin. No, Aladdin was good. Don't get me wrong, I actually liked it, mm. but I'll, I think the cartoon is yep. still untouchable. Jungle Book as well. Pausing that character. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I think your... the originals sometimes are savage. They have to be. Uh, what is your favorite aspect of your profession? We've sort of been through that, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've a few. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll move on. We yeah, already okay. covered that. Uh, if you could magically yeah. inject one personality trait into each member of the human race, what would it be? Uh, oh, gee, like as in an already given trait or. Yeah. So say like it could be like, so like humor or it could be compassion or it could be vengeance or it could be, <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> Uh, oh, Jesus. I Now, like, humour, right? Because I think a lot of people don't get jokes anymore. Yes. Like, mm. I'd be afraid to say some joke in case you offend somebody anymore. Or, like, now, I've got shitty jokes anyway, <laughs> but I'd be in fear that I'd go off and I'd offend somebody. I'd be like, oh, fuck it. But, and, and it's meant in a good place. Mm, so yeah. I, I like the humor like and, and it means people appreciate my shitty jokes a wee bit more too. So <laughs> no, that's always nice. Good stuff. Yeah, humor. I I go with humor as well, Mike. Oh, you, I'd have to go for either love or happiness uh, love because or happiness. the the world needs more of it. That's my view. Mm. Make love to everybody. Every- everybody <laughs> make love to spontaneous <laughs> in the shop in Mike. the line for the coffee. Make love to them. <laughs> 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 That's definitely gonna be a clip for the uh, if, <laughs> if you were a drag queen, what stage name would you use? <laughs> oh, uh, um, just because I have a small arse, I'd like, I'd, I'd like a like a little fat arse. I'd say 
Tommy Tush or, or Tushy or something like that. Which is weird how I came up with that one, but yeah, I thought go with that one. I love it, Michael. Uh, Hector McQueen. Hector, Hector McQueen. Hector, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very oh. name. <laughs> Mark, uh, Mark, what's yours? I mean, just Mark Licious or something. That's my <laughs> one name. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go with the two names. <laughs> uh Nine and tommy this is gonna be a tough one though uh steve Irwin or david attenborough in terms of who would you watch first so would you watch a steve Irwin show or a david attenborough documentary not as people i don't think that's fair <laughs> there was there be there is three men i would change my sexuality for right? <laughs> david attenborough <laughs> david attenborough will ferrell and uh and an old Mel Gibson, right? There's my true man, David Attenborough. <laughs> Not the racist right now. Don't clip that. <laughs> Don't clip it. Uh, no, he's actually a, he's, a, he's David Attenborough has to be just even with his voice, like he's just the perfect tone. And if you if you ever just want to watch, like I used to look, like watch those documentaries, the kid like Planet Earth and whatnot. And there used to be like if you get up early of a Saturday morning, they'd be on BBC, and I'd use the the vibe. And then nowadays, if I ever need to go to sleep. I'll throw on one. I'm like, all right, well, I'll enjoy it for the first 10 minutes and then I'll pass out of sleep. Oh. So David Attenborough for me. Hmm. Very good. I uh, think I'll go for But sleep. I don't fancy him, but I just turn gay for him. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. It's not the most obscure thing that's been said in this podcast. No. So. <laughs> I, I definitely guess. I'd have to be obviously Steve Arwin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tommy, what is your favourite part about Ireland? Ooh. Living in it. Um, it can be right like, just because I've actually lived away a fair amount. Yeah, I just like the 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 sense of uh, you're a part of something. Mm. Like no matter like no matter where you travel and you can go anywhere in the world, there's nothing quite like walking down your street and meeting somebody that 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 that, that you know. Like, and I was having this conversation with the lads today, is because when I was was just back from Dubai and I was like, it's just nice. Now it gets tiring after a while, but it's just refreshing to be able to walk down and go and it could be barely some, you know, but you'd sit and then you'd have a conversation for three or four minutes and you're like, oh Jesus, that was lovely. I saw so and so today. Whereas when you're when it, it's one of the things you can overlook when you're traveling or even when you're when you're in college in Dublin. And it's nice just being able to to sit sit in a pub and just have random chat with someone that you could have went to school with. Or someone that you know a friend of, and it's like, oh well, that sense of belonging to somewhere and you're attached to somewhere is nice. Mm. Yeah, that's huge. That was that's, that's that's unbelievable. Way. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful, Tommy. I think that's I wouldn't be, I don't think I'd be able to appreciate that as much had I not travelled, like you said, like because it is that lack of it when you are travelling. Like there is massive benefits to travelling in terms of like opening your worldview and seeing new things and new experiences, but not in compares to actually being a part of a community. And knowing people around you and having a support group and having friends and having your family like i sort of plan to go back to australia but now i don't after coming back yeah, and 100 percent. like even like with, with clubs yeah yeah that's definitely yeah oh, that'd be mine as well michael what's your favorite part of being oh. in ireland <laughs> <laughs> well you gave much better answers when you gave the question first I was thinking oh best part of Ireland now well the weather wouldn't be one and then I looked any. out and I said back in <laughs> or <deep> one <laughs> or <deep. laughs> I looked out and I saw a lovely blackbird and I think we've great birds here in this country of ours so I was going to say the birds, <laughs> but I'd definitely I'd surrender my answer for yours 100% that was a great one Tommy Thank and you. I suppose that perspective comes again from travel as you said Mark yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's your question around the, yeah unbelievable that was a, a great section mark uh we have a flash flood to come tommy of course but uh actually while we're waiting for mark i might stumble through my notes you went to gambia tell us looking back on gambia what what did you make of it what what was it like for you and has it informed your life today oh, weird because i was uh i was just i was just walking uh because i'd be quite friendly with john forrest uh who organizes gambia because I used to take his, he used to take a lot of Spanish kids in. So we just get chatting, uh, chatting. And because Chris went to Gambia when he was in school, uh, John Carr used to say it to me the whole time. And he invited my dad one year to come, and my dad loved it. And we we're just, I was just sitting uh, chatting to him one day. He said, "Do you want to grab a coffee?" So we we're chatting. He's like, "Tommy, would you like to go to Gambia?" And I was like, "Yeah, John, 
why not sure like it's it'll be it'll be it'll be, it'll be class now I was kind of late to the party because like all the kids knew who was going all the teachers were picked and everything and like I I I only I think I was at the latest possible point to get injections so I was picked around then to go and when so was this just, uh, got a couple of injections and then barely this was only last year all right so you went to Grammy last year so I think I found out yeah or- only, only last year took a took a took a week off is that that was it in 2019 or sorry 20 what were you in 20, 20, this year sorry 20 uh, no last year 2020 oh before the pandemic yeah. there was a trip yeah, to I gambia confused. yeah 2020 oh i didn't know that. the february well i think it was a february i went yeah before oh March. My God. Yeah, the, that's the last uh, the last card went over yeah right. so we like we were we were there and the, the coronavirus was, I thought nothing of it. And I was like, gosh, there's some lad here testing everyone for coronavirus in the middle of this Gambian airport. And I was like, that's crazy, isn't it? Imagine if it got worse. I and mean, then here we are. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> well, a lo- load of it, like, it's like, you're just seeing a load of like, I know it's like quite, quite common in like Asian countries that they wear it, but they're all wearing around the, the master on the airport. Like, just, that's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> and then just, yeah, there we go. And then we get there and then a week later, I think there was supposed to be an Italy trip in the school that got cancelled. Actually got cancelled when we were over there because of the coronavirus in, in Italy. And then yeah, but I'm actually uh, I'm actually looking to bring a crowd to Gambia. Um this I'm, I'm now depending on with, with everything that's gone on now with IE having a baby on the way and whatnot. But I wanted to bring a an older crowd to Gambia. Because I said it to John and he's behind it. I was like, it'd be nice to bring a crowd over that have a certain skill set or as because it's, it's, it's as much as the kids do a wonderful job over there if you have adults over there that have a skill base or have key contacts you'll never make massive changes um, and create a sustainable way to maybe to to to, to build a a, 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 a follow, well, not a following like a build a, a tunnel of information coming from both sides or where a t- little town of gory can help uh, uh, a country in Gambia because Gambia is basically a city, Banjul, like it's basically just a city. Um, you can create a ton like that, and we were hopefully, well, hopefully looking to go over in the October midterm and then set up an adult education kind of uh, an education center over there, just so when people do like get forced out of school, there is an avenue for them to come back and learn and go off and do something else in their life as opposed to, oh, well, and they're like due to financial circumstances or or some other sort, form of circumstance, I wasn't able to uh, go to school. Well, now there's an avenue back for them. And they're like, well, this is something positive and let's let's build on it. And then let's have it not as a uh, not as a school-based thing, but as a, right, well, if we can get a little town of Gori to go out and do some sort of good in Africa, um, it's, uh, it's, it's just a small, small way of, of helping. I think it's good to, I think when people talk about charity, it's, yeah, that's, people talk about charity though. I was only talking to someone, it's like, well, what can you, like, what about people here? And I was, it got me thinking, I was like, but you don't understand that the situation you're here, you may be struggling is a million times better than the situation that they're in, where they're sleeping on the side of the road or, or they're at risk of malaria, where they're, they don't know where their food's coming that day, or they don't know, um, where where their next meal will come or they don't know if their child's going to survive or they don't know how they're going to get through school where it's just a perspective thing because with teenagers and it's it's so easy to experience something but as a teenager like oh well, that i did that as a as, as, as a kid i did that as a kid, like kid and then forget about it whereas you goes over as an adult it's it's longer lasting you might have kids that you can go well i can relate to that you might be struggling yourself and go well, i can relate to that business owner that's trying to go back and learn English or whatever it may be and then you're like right well if we can just mesh together something it'll be uh it'll be good well, that's the plan now listen I'm very I'm very conscious that I say things and don't follow through enough on things so that's my resolution for 2020 is 2021 even to be more uh more action and less and less talk mm. and just are, are you under time pressure are you all right 
No, 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 no. No, no, that's great. Um, just um, say on Gambia, uh, neither of us have been to Gambia. So what what is it like there? Having only been just there a year ago, like what what? I know you gave us some examples there, but tell us what are the biggest differences you see in an African country like Gambia compared to here? So the biggest thing is that no matter how 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 they struggle, they're still so generous. And it's still like they like I remember I was talking to a kid and I was like, oh, I like your t-shirt. And he was like, Do you want? I was like, no, Jesus, no, 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 I don't want them at all. Um but then there's just like like infrastructure where you see that it's like there was a there's a bit where you had to cross a bridge that kids had to cross for every day, but it was just like just full of waste, like like shite, like fucking and um, God knows what else was in it. And these kids are going through it every day. Some of them were like sh- like some of their kids were just walking in their bare feet and you'd walk across and like how are these even able to do it? Like it's it's just a contrast of um of what we the biggest thing I got from it and the biggest thing about it's just like it's like a post apocalyptic world. When you look at it, it's like it's just sand everywhere. And then when kids look or when you see kids, they're at a stage now where and this is the negative, it's like it's always when they see a white person, it's like, oh well give me you you're you're here to give me something and it's it's it, it's like i've been to india and i've been to thailand and it's it's the same thing it's like i hate that mindset that uh just because you're from a first world country that um you're seen as like nearly this mo- like really important person or you're this you're this mystical figure that's going to come and and help them where it's like we can if you can just get like a community based system where where they're the people that they chase after people within their own community and not some fucking like me in Thailand, some sweaty little shitty tourists that's just fucking drinking too much chang and fucking getting naked and running up the streets like I'm no one to be fucking running after, you know? Yeah. Brilliant, Tommy. Jenny, I didn't know um Gambia had such an impact on on well, clearly it has had a great impact on you and uh and your family. I suppose that connection with uh, John Forrest again is the key one. Um uh, so we might go into a loud flash. Yeah, John's, John's, I think John's a good kid. Yeah. Um, where do I go now for our flash flood? Have you ever heard of these? Yeah, have you ever heard no, of flash I, I, James was telling me about them briefly, but I've never. Oh, James was telling me about lots of places. Hello, my name's James. I do a flash flood. Here we go. Well, fellas. Um... Been out and about with work this week. Uh, Jody Call's been on the road a good bit, but I've noticed uh, there's an awful lack of Christian motoring out there at the minute. Like, just no such thing as, oh, yeah, you go on, go across the street there, and like that. It's just go, go, go. Go, go, go. They're not taking time to help their fellow motorists or, or be kind to them. And then on top of that, there's certain towns around Ireland. Where people feel they can just cross the road anywhere. <laughs> Our just step out in front of you and expect you to stop. And I, I've had to bite my tongue a couple of times. Is all I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! That's brilliant. Mm. Christian motoring. I love that. Yeah. Place, yeah. Um, to I go to actually. So moving from Carl Young to Joe Duffy. Joe mm-hmm. Duffy said once that um, you know the world might be a better place if every driver adopted the strategy of letting one other driver out every day. Maybe then the traffic system would move better. So maybe uh, Joe Duffy and James Hogg could combine on that measure. Uh, what do you think, uh, Tommy? Are you a driver yourself? Do you agree with? Uh, have I, you noticed this? Yeah, I'm one of the dickheads, right? And I'll put my hand up because I'll just throw myself across the main street. Like if I just see any space and that's me and then I'm just tossing my hand, I won't even look at them, just toss my hand up and go, I cheers. But then uh, like I drive a little fucking moped, but I'm a, like, I used to be really like, like I used to be really sound, like I'd never go up the, the side of the road anymore. But if you're in Gory and how quick the traffic gets and then how ignorant everyone is, you just automatically adopt that going, oh, well, fuck it. Now, this, I'm waiting three cars, four cars to get out here now. And it's just in the same the same mindset. The only positive is because I wear shorts every time and it's always fucking raining, people automatically see this little moped and go, what the fuck is wrong with this lad? Go on, we let him out, we let him out, we let him out, which is grand. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm one of uh, 
I'm one of Floods as uh, enemies because I'll just chuck myself across the road uh, when I'm when crossing. Like especially, I always go to the book cafe for coffee. Like I don't even look. I'm just like right, throw the hand up. Hopefully, I don't get hit. Yeah. And then uh, jump across. Oh, I do. Sorry, sorry, Floods. Yeah, yeah everyone me. does that, and I guarantee you he does it as well. James. So, yeah, I guarantee <laughs> he does it. <laughs> yeah. Road rage is funny one dog. Would you? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. No, I don't. I don't get road rage. Thankfully, I, yeah. I wouldn't get too angry. I'd actually be pretty good at letting people out as well. Just yeah, wave them on. I'm not generally don't rush. My girlfriend has the thing, and she has road rage, but like she thinks that she's able to because she goes ah you so and so or whatever, and then that's it in the moment. And because if she didn't do that, she'd hold on to it. But for me, <laughs> I I it's a step too far for me anyway. You know, I I just don't get it. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a weird thing. Mm. It's the uh, I, I, I listened. I think it was Joe Rogan talk about this, and he said it's because we're in these big metal machines traveling at a hundred kilometers an hour that that we're a bit more alert and on edge. So I, I never even thought of that. Yeah, I just need to try DMT. That's such a Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> so now, um, I have a few. So Joe's funny though. Like, actually, speaking of which, um, I listened to one with. Um, Oh, what's his name? He's, I'm a big fan of his. Joe, Johan, Harry. Uh, no, that's probably not the right name. He's a Harvard psychology professor. And he's very, you know... Oh, no, it was actually your man, Breckwork. Sorry, you know, James... Um, Nestor. Yeah, Nestor was on. He said, um, my mother or my grandmother is listening or something like that. So he didn't want to go there at all. But Joe still felt the need to... You know, <laughs> wanted to explore that avenue with him. <laughs> Um, but another thing that struck me there, uh, Tommy, you've you've posted before on your Instagram about embrace ourselves, and um, I view this as the OG form of po- body positivity. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Right. So, oh, of course, uh, uh, I'm I'm very much under the, the the mindset that everyone needs to be comfortable with themselves, no matter no matter if they're if they're happy. In their bodies or they're unhappy you have to be comfortable with, with within yourself so um i see a lot of like i see a lot of body bashing where it's like oh um people are so self-critical of themselves they judge themselves because they might have a love handle here or they judge themselves because they might have stretch marks here where it's just like it's it's turned it's just turns themselves in such a negative mindset but I'll go on to contrast to that too now. I don't like the way that sometimes we promote unhealthy figures. Mm. Like the, the, where I think it's be accepted in every single body shape, but understand that some body shapes are harmful for your body to be in. Mm. Sometimes it's, it's, it's okay to be, it's, it's okay to take a healthy body, but if you're severely overweight, it's, it's, it's not good for you mm. and as much as it's 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 fair to say that we want to um, accept your body during you need to also accept that that body might be in a healthy position to prolong your life that might body might be in a healthy position for your joints um so there's a fine line there between um accept, it's all about accepting yourself but you also have to accept where you're at too so like like i'm a pt but i have a really big fetish for pre-packed sandwiches and milky bars. So I'm not walking around with a six pack because I've got a little pouch, but I'm but I'm comfortable with my little pouch for the most part. Right. But it's it's to the point where it's almost a taboo subject to talk about your your uh a, the body at, in one position because if you if you go if you attack someone for being severely overweight, well then you're you're your body shaming. Mm. But then um if you're coming from the other side where you're like, well, I'm not attack. all bodies are fine. You also need to re- understand the repercussions of, 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 of the implications of what being overweight is or being too skinny is a lot of times in schools, I give a couple of school talks and it's actually not obesity is that the biggest problem. It's anorexia. Now. It's mm-hmm. people not eating enough thinking that, well, I need to achieve this figure. And it's not just in females anymore. It's as much in lads now where it's like, well, oh, I want that. I want that skinny look. I want that. Well, it's it's also not healthy either. So it's it's all about striking a balance, and that's where and that's where you're trying to get your point across. Because it's in a world where fitness is social media dominated, everyone wants to put their their own opinions on it, and people often put their own opinion on it just to create a little stir. 
mm. so that they're they may be recognized as 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 like like I like James Smith and James Smith went to attack against it. But now James Smith is specifically known for that. And like um you've got Joe Wicks who's is 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 his own vibe on it too. So like Rosanna Purcell does it well because she she shows her stretch marks. She'll do two photos back to back of like where she's posed and where she's unposed. And I think we just need to be more open with ourselves and less about what we we allow others like other opinions in because opinions are like our souls. Just because you have one doesn't mean I want to see it. Oh, <laughs> brilliant! And that's yeah. the big thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. Thank so you. yeah, there's my take on that. Tommy, that's a great view, and uh, it's been a thoroughly enjoyable conversation. Thanks, William, for being with us. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. Lads, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Deadly. Yeah. And uh, just to, uh, wh what's your Instagram handle? At Trifactor Fitness is the main one, I suppose. Uh, at Trifactor Fitness, yeah, that's the one. Brilliant, great. Absolutely. And you find Tommy there. Yeah. And thanks to all our Patreon supporters, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, lads. Cheers. Yeah.